Hi, Randy Horwitz. I'm the medical director of the Andrew Weil Center for Integrative Medicine, speaking to you from Tucson, Arizona. Just wanted to let you know that we have prepared some mini videos, about five minutes or less, to provide necessary information about the coronavirus and some steps that you can uh, do yourself to try to prevent infection or prevent spread and to deal with it uh, in a more effective and healthy manner. These include general information as well as tips to lower anxiety and help you boost your immune system. So please enjoy. Hi, it's Randy Korowitz again, medical director at the Andrew Weil Center for Integrative Medicine at the University of Arizona. And this first video is just introducing you to the concept of viruses and particularly the COVID-19 that we're dealing with. So COVID-19 is actually the name of the condition produced by the virus. Um, just like we have the flu that's produced by a virus called influenza. Well, COVID-19 stands for Coronavirus Disease 2019, but that's not what we call the causative agent. And if you've been watching the briefings of the infection control panel on TV, you know that the virus is the SARS-CoV-2 2019 novel coronavirus. So that's the fancy scientific name. Uh, SARS, by the way, stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. And as you recall, we had an epidemic of SARS some years ago from a different related coronavirus, but that has since disappeared. So what do we know about viruses? What do they look like? Uh, are they bacteria? Are they different? Well, here's an artist's rendition of what we think a coronavirus looks like. It's got those spikes. It looks like a, an out-of-this-world spaceship a bit. Um, interestingly, it's, it is a little spaceship. It contains instructions for making more spaceships, so it's like a bad science fiction movie. We'll look a little closer at the virus in just a minute, but let's look at the size. So on this slide, we see a comparison of a human hair, um, and obviously greatly enlarged, and the diameter of that hair is 50 to 70 microns, just to give you an idea of the measurement. It's uh, 50 to 70 microns. Next to it is a piece of beach sand, which is about 90 microns. Uh, this is tiny sand that you can barely see. Just for comparison, you can see the dust, pollen, and mold, the little blue balls in that figure uh, right there. And you can see that those are pretty darn small. Well, how does the virus compare to this? Actually, if I lined up viruses along the diameter of the human hair, I can fit between 500 and 700 virus particles, those little spaceships, 500 to 700. So that shows you how small these things are, very, very small. And um, the viruses, they even though I call them spaceships, they kind of travel on respiratory droplets and we'll look at that in a few minutes and see how viruses are transmitted. But I want you to get an idea of how small they are. So how are viruses transmitted? Most of them don't fly on their own. They can be airborne, but usually they're airborne on particles that we call aerosols. These are airborne transmissions of small particles that you can see here. Um, and these are the small particles, not the ones that you feel when someone sneezes on you, if, um, if you've ever experienced that. These are very small particles that you may not even appreciate in the air. And these are capable of flying long distances. Uh, they're very, very small microscopic particles, and they can carry many virus particles on them. The large particle droplets are respiratory secretions. Someone coughs, someone sneezes, and these are larger, heavier particles. Sure, they carry viruses, but they don't, they don't travel very far. They're not very light. They're heavy. They require close contact. And that's kind of why we say stay uh, four to six feet away from other people. If someone sneezes or coughs, these particles can carry about that far. Finally, the third category is something to consider seriously, and that is 
self-inoculation from contaminated secretions or from surfaces. We call these in science fomites, F-O-M-I-T-E-S. These require direct contact with secretions. So someone sneezes or have viruses on, on, on their hands, touch a surface like a countertop, don't wash it off. Someone else comes along and touches that surface, they can pick up these viruses. So that's called self-inoculation, and that's why we're worried about mail, boxes, um, store shelves, things that we purchase, canned goods, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Those are the three main uh, modes of transmission of these virus particles. So let's take a look at the structure up close of one of these spaceship coronaviruses. So this picture is from the New York Times. The coronavirus, uh, you can see those spike proteins, and these little suckers are what helps the virus get into your cells. Uh, it's called a spike protein. It looks like a spike. And um, you can see inside is the instruction manual, the genetic material, in this case RNA, which tells the virus um, or tell, tells the cell how to make the virus. So the, the virus is actually going to take over the cell's machinery, use its instruction manual to make more viruses. So it is like a bad science fiction movie. Now, the important thing about this um, about this diagram is look at um, look at the the shell of the the spaceship the shell of the virion the coronavirus it is a lipid membrane and other proteins what does that mean well that's the Achilles heel of this virus that's where we can get it why because we know what happens to lipids when you hit them with soap for example, you're washing a pan uh, in your sink after having cooked something, there's grease in it, you fill it with water, you add a drop of dishwasher detergent, and what happens? Boom, you see that whole layer of, of fat just dissolve. That's exactly what happens when you wash your hands with soap to the coronavirus uh, membrane. So the virus itself is covered by a lipid membrane, and that's where we can get it. You hit lipids with soap, they dissolve. That's how you can inactivate a virus. So soap is very good. Clorox is very good. Alcohol is very good. They all dissolve lipids, Windex, ammonia, all those things. So very important fact. So while this virus is daunting and scary and, mic and submicroscopic, it has a weak point, and that's its, its shell, its lipid membrane. And I just want to end with showing where the coronavirus fits in. This is a crowded graph, but it's got four columns. This is a common cold coronavirus. So coronavirus, there's hundreds of different subtypes. Some of them cause regular colds. Um, 15 to 30% of common colds is caused by a coronavirus. And uh, it requires a, a cold, as you know, requires close contact, touching a surface. Millions of people get this and recover from it. You have a bad cold, they occur year-round. Uh, you're laid up for a few days, and that's it. Another coronavirus is the SARS coronavirus from 2002. Uh, this one hopped from bats to humans, maybe through other animals as well. And we had about 8,000 cases and about 774 deaths, about 10% mortality rate. The nice thing about this virus is it kind of ended, uh, after two years, kind of ended without going anywhere. And there's been a few episodic cases, but it hasn't reared its ugly head again. The MERS virus was pretty short-lived. This was in 2012. It's another coronavirus uh, from camels or consuming camel milk, but then transmitted by close contact. About 2,500 cases and about 850 deaths. 34% mortality rate. Fortunately, um, the case reports have been declining, and it's not a very prevalent virus. Finally, COVID-19 we're dealing with comes from Wuhan, China. As you know, if you watch the presidential briefs, um, transmission, we talked about transmission. Cases are going up. Current status is we have to stop the spread, stop the transmission. Best way to do it is isolate infected people and keep non-infected people safe and keep them at their distance. So hope this was informative. We will have more videos posted below, and they will cover topics that 
will be of interest to you. Take care.